Hi, and welcome to my additional videos to help you in your calligraphy journey. This video is part of a series called Common Mistakes, and I'm going to be talking today about pen positioning. So these videos are designed for beginner students and for people who want to improve in their copper plate calligraphy practice. And I'm touching upon subjects that are very common after 10 years of teaching copper plate calligraphy and seeing many students um, having challenges with the same topics. So, okay. Uh, what I'm using today, as always, is walnut ink. Uh, I'm using a hand 101, although if you're a total beginner or just started recently, probably I would uh, suggest you using a Niko G, Tachikawa G, or zebra G nibs, because this nib is very, very flexible and for beginners might be very challenging. So this is just a recommendation, not a rule. Now in here, if we have a look at these blank guidelines, I'm currently using a six millimeter one. And I know that because at the end of this page, I have the information. If you need additional blank guidelines, you can read the information on this the on the description on this video and you are able to download uh, blank calligraphy guidelines as well as um, a pdf file about calligraphy materials okay let's go so what i normally do is i place a paper on top and i attach the paper and then we are gonna start writing but before doing that i just want to go back in here and talk about uh, the angle of the writing and the position of the pen, regardless the angle of the writing, which is the topic for this video. So, as you know, with copper plate calligraphy, we have a very, very um, consistent rhythm of going up, getting a thin movement, going down, performing a thick down stroke. Now, why I'm talking today about the position of the pen? I'm talking about it because it's very important that the position of the pen in relation to the guidelines is the correct one. Otherwise, we are going to have a lot of problems. So first of all, let's talk about how am I holding the pen? So I always use, as you can see here, a piece of, is, is a page, a blank page, or a recycled paper folded in half to protect the surface from my own skin. Second of all, how am I holding the tool? So I have these two fingers who are going to be the drivers of my hand. And then I have what I called, or what, what it is called, the tripod method which are three fingers wrapped around the pen holder. That means my thumb is in touch with this area. This area, well, the golden, this golden piece attached to the holder, it's called a flange. I call that an elbow because it's a very uh, visualized way to understand what it is, this piece. So this elbow or flange, once I position the three fingers, my thumb is actually in touch with the bridge. So you see this area that now you can uh, see on the screen very clear. My other two fingers are wrapped around in this way. If you are holding the pen in a different way and it works for you, fine. Mm, I won't say anything. If you're holding the pen not for many hours and you are holding your pencil in a very different way, like two fingers, even three fingers, in any other way. And you haven't spent too many hours driving the pen because this pen is such a, a specific shape and such a specific feeling. I strongly recommend to use the tripod method. My thumb is in touch with the flange, my other two fingers wrapped around, and now these two fingers are driving my hand. Number one is this. Number two is uh, you can see here, just a second, let me um, clean the holder. The position of my holder is much higher. So my holder is not sitting in this section, which is the regular area where a pencil or a ballpoint pen will be sitting is actually much higher up. So if I go outside and you will see, um, 
The pen holder is what I call aligned to the knuckle line. So it's more or less aligned to this area. So it's much higher than in a regular. Of course, I am talking about right-hander. If you are a left-hander, there is an additional video called left-hander positioning or left-hander setup positioning that talks about that. So please um, go and check that video. Now, the pen holder is higher. My two fingers are driving. My other three fingers are holding the pen. And now the part that is the crucial part is the nib has to be an extension of the angle of the writing. It has to be always completely aligned or an extension to the 55 degrees. Otherwise, we are gonna have a lot of problems. Why? Because when you apply pressure and I don't have any ink, and of course you can see that, let's go in. I apply a lot of pressure on the paper. You can see that both sides of the tin are touching the paper. If I hold the pen in a different position, which is to say, let's move the paper, which is to say my pen is not now aligned to the 55 degrees, is slightly in this direction. One thing presses on the paper a lot more than the other. Let's say that it's like driving a car and only using the two wheels from one side of the car and the other two are in the air. If I place the pen, almost perpendicular to the 55 degrees, uh, definitely when I press down, the nib does not want to open. So it's struggling to open. And again, I'm putting a lot of pressure only on one side of the nib. Of course, if I place the pen parallel to the slant lines, so, sorry, parallel to the baseline, yes. Okay, the pen will open but then means I'm going to create a thick horizontal stroke because the both sides of the tin are in, are in touch with the paper, okay? But this is not what we are doing. We are doing is we are writing up and down. We are creating thick strokes in every down stroke. And to be able to obtain a thick enough down stroke, we want both tins touching the paper with the same amount of pressure. And to do that, we need to work aligned to the 55 degrees. In any of these positions will work if the movement is upright, which is not the case. In here will work if the movement is like the complete opposite angle to the angle we have at the moment, okay, in this direction. So always check while writing, always check that the pen is aligned to the 55 degrees. And if it is not, we need to reposition. Uh, something else I haven't spoken to is that on the camera, you see my paper parallel to the table, but what I'm doing when I'm writing copper plate calligraphy is actually having the paper positioned on an angle in this way. So in this way, what I obtain is a little trick that my positioning, my hand positioning, it feels a lot more comfortable working on a 45 degree angle because it's already the position and the angle of the writing. Now, for the camera, I move the camera and change the paper so you, you don't have to break your neck. But you understand that when I'm writing, coming from the right hand side, I'm holding this angle. And so now when the pen is supported and I move the a hand up and down, I obtain this 55 degrees with a lot more ease. The reason why we have a flange in the first place is for the same reason, to help us obtain the required angle for copper plate calligraphy. So now, okay, let's set everything so it's straight on the camera and we don't have problems. So I'm gonna actually leave the paper as is, which is how I'm writing, and rotate the camera. And now it's like magic. All right, now I am going to, yes, attach the paper. And then we are just going to do a few very basic movements to understand what I'm talking about without the ink. Well, now we'll have the ink added into it. So as always, I'm marking the X height for you to have um, 
context of where I am on this grid. It's height. OK. So let's review everything I just mentioned. So I have a folded paper here to protect the page. Now my two fingers are in touch with the paper. My three fingers are wrapping. And the very important part of the whole thing in here now is that my nib is completely aligned to the paper. So I'm going up. Let me get more ink. Let me move slightly a little bit more and move the camera again. And then I'm going up. Laptop and down. I'm going up, laptop and down. If I maintain the pen in this position, as you are seeing at the moment, I can easily, not that is easy, but I can easily open the nib and create a down stroke. Okay, if my nib is not in this position, it's in a different position and I repeat the same I just did now, going up, flat top and down. It might open, but the resistance against the paper is very different and I might get paper caught here while I'm going around the corner. I'm going to move even more. You will notice the position because currently my paper is at 45 degrees and my elbow is open and is on the table. So my forearm is on the table. If I open even more so you can see how the position now is completely different to the angle of the writing, I'm going up and then I'm going down. Is getting more and more difficult to get and I can see the resistance is increasing a lot. With my hand 101, I still can obtain thick strokes but I can see the resistance I'm feeling on the paper a lot. If I position the pen basically like perpendicular to the slant, I am getting a lot of friction in here and it just feels really uncomfortable to go down. And still, I'm still obtaining the thick and thins, but I can promise you that the feeling is far from comfortable and my arm and my hand gets very, very, very shaky because The pen is not performing as it does normally. So again, reposition the pen, make sure that both things are in contact with the page, and then you get a very stable and fluid down stroke. If you are using another nib that is not a hand 101, you probably don't obtain thickness across any of these examples I have just showed you with the nib in a different position. So I strongly recommend doing this test. Always make sure that the pen is in the right positioning and the nib is an extension of the 55 degrees. And then you will not get caught so much paper and the thickness will become a lot easier. Also, you can control a lot better because Depending on the nib you're using, you can get thicker strokes and you can get thicker strokes. And then you can just try to perform the maximum amount of pressure possible and see how far your nib can take you. So now I'm going to look for the maximum capacity and see the incredible amount of ink I'm downloading. 
This is not going to happen with all nips. This is happening with my nip because it's very flexible. So Hunt 101 is going to give you this type of really, really a wide spread. Thumb strokes, but not with the other ones. Definitely, if you try to go down a stroke with the nip in a different position, which I'll do it now, You see how the nip now, it's absolutely not going along. And I try to press maximum. Well, I get all this dented stuff because the nip is struggling, because I'm forcing the nip to go down when in reality, what it would like to do is that with both things applied on the paper, this is how it will go down. This will be the direction. So it's always an extension on the direction of the nip. And now I'm using this position and going down that way. So I'm obtaining all this massive resistance in here. Okay, so as we are writing slowly, double check, very simple double check that your nip is always an extension of the 55 degrees and it will work just fine. If you are writing with a different slant, let's say 60, 70, 30, whatever it is, and still using this type of writing, your nib, a line, and an extension of the slant of your writing. So if it's that way, the nib will go in the same direction. Excellent. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in another video very soon.